to Raven Canada, and I'm going to be talking to you today about domestic violence. How many of you have heard the saying, the rule of thumb? <laughs> it's a late 19th century uh, law that stated a man could punish his wife without fear of legal action as long as the stick was no thicker than his thumb. We all know someone who has been abused, whether it's someone in our family, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, or in our congregation. I have worked in this field for 10 years as a victim advocate, helping victims, hundreds of victims, survive by meeting them where they are and giving them the support they need. I also train law enforcement officers and first responders on the cycle of domestic violence. I can relate to what these women are going through from past experience. I want you all to see that domestic violence is not just the victim's problem, it's a societal problem. Each of us can make a difference in someone else's life if we all stand up and speak out against violence. I intend to explain what domestic violence is, second, the signs of abuse and red flags and the impact of violence, and also why she stays with the abuser. Okay, let's begin Domestic Violence 101. What is domestic violence? It's a pattern of physically, sexually, verbally, and or emotionally abusive behaviors used by one person to assert power over another or to maintain control over them. Domestic violence does not discriminate. Anyone can be a victim of domestic violence, regardless of age, race, socioeconomics, ethnicity, religion, or sexual orientation. Very few people identify themselves as abusers or victims. So take a second, look around the room. One in four women will experience domestic violence in her lifetime. The single greatest risk factor of becoming a victim is being female. And for this reason, I'll be using the gender female since 85% of victims are women. Domestic violence has historical roots. In the early 1900s, rape was considered a property crime. If you were unmarried, it was a crime against your father. If you were married, it was a crime against your husband. That's according to the Department of Criminal Justice. Domestic violence also has cultural roots because family violence perpetuates itself. Children who are abused or witness abuse, often the little boys will grow up to become abusers and the little girls will become victims of domestic violence. Domestic violence also has social roots because of unequal power relationships between men and women. Now we move on to the second point. What are some signs, possible red flags, and the impact of domestic violence? What to look for if you suspect someone you know is being abused? Visible bruises that go unexplained or either the explanation doesn't make sense to you. They may also attempt to hide the bruising by wearing concealing clothes or covering with makeup. The victim often cancels at the last minute or frequently misses scheduled meetings or they just don't show up at all. The abuser seems to make all the decisions. He's very jealous and he also isolates her from family and friends. Most cases of domestic violence is never reported to the police. There are red flags in one's behavior that, may, that you may notice that they will not have healthy relationships, such as blames others for their own faults, they have a history of family violence, strong gender stereotypes, they treat their partner like a possession, and they isolate from family and friends. And one big one is they are quick to get involved in relationships. The impact of domestic violence cost the U.S. $4 billion each year in direct medical costs. Victims lost almost 8 million days of paid work because of the violence. There's more than 18.5 million mental health care visits each year. Between 1999 and 2007, there were over 1,200 victims of domestic violence. Every four days, a woman is murdered by someone who claims to love her. Half of all adult female vic homicide victims are killed by intimate partners. This brings me to my final point. Well, why does she stay? There are many reasons why she stays. According to the National Network to End Domestic Violence, the biggest reason is fear of being killed because the most dangerous time for a victim is when she has decided to leave. Fear of being stalked by the abuser, as well as belief that he'll be able to find her anywhere. Fear of placing her children at risk because of unsupervised visitation with him and also he will use the children to get to her. Isolation by the abuser results in a lack of support systems because family and friends have given up on her. They, do not, they may not have a job, money, transportation, childcare, 
or nowhere else to go. Sometimes this lifestyle seems normal to them because they grew up in a family where domestic violence was. The economic reality is the victim may not be able to support herself and her children without the abuser's money. She may not possess marketable skills, no cash, no checks, and important documents. This brings me to my conclusion. As I pointed out, domestic violence is a pattern of abuse that does not discriminate. I've explained the signs of an abused woman, the red flags of an abuser, and the impact of violence. Then I emphasize the many reasons why a victim may stay with the abuser, and why we as a community, family, or friend should get involved to help the victim break free from the cycle of abuse. It's easy for us to speak out when we see a child being abused, but rarely do we step in to help a woman, because we've been taught that it's not our business to interfere. Just remember this last statement. Children who live in a household where there is abuse, 30% to 60% of them will be abused. So speak up and out against domestic violence. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Get involved. Thank you. Okay, now we can have